I thought it was over for me. And that's pretty much why I wanted to quit Gorilla Tag. Despite being the biggest Gorilla Tag YouTuber to date, there's a lot of stuff about J Man Curly that you may not know. Like what he does on a day to day basis, the time he almost quit Gorilla Tag. Well, today I actually sat down with J Man to find out more about this and a lot more of the behind the scenes of what goes on in his videos. So stick around. This is a good video. First question I want to we'll start off with is you started off YouTube like very, very early on. What was your kind of thoughts behind just starting YouTube when you did? Damn, I guess. I don't know, something about making stuff that was entertaining was appealing to me. I can't say I thought about it so deeply because I was young, but intrinsically, the idea of, of generating a positive emotion through the format of creating a video was very uh, enticing, and I just wanted to do more of it. So I would make videos about literally anything. I'd make them off my iPhone 5, just whatever I could do, I did. You went on from, you know, just random videos to then splurting out like a bunch of vlogs. What kind of got you into like the kind of filmmaking aspect behind that? Um, at that time in my life, I was getting definitely more into cinematic stuff. I bought a bunch of like really cool camera gear that I don't use any of now. And also for my mm -hmm. university acceptance project, I had to make a short film because I wanted to go to film school because it was the only thing that I would have remotely enjoyed if I were to get in. Spoiler alert, I didn't get in. But anyways, yeah, so I had just been getting into this kind of cinematic era and I had been watching a lot of Casey Neistat. I loved vlogging in general. I was good at it and Casey Neistat was a good inspiration and I was doing stuff with my life so I thought might as well film it. That era may come back yeah. to me. I'm not sure, maybe when I'm older. Second channel content? Yeah, third channel. <laughs> Third channel, damn. When you were uploading these vlogs with getting like little to no views on them, what was inspiring you to keep posting them? I just love the process. I mean like, I, and specifically I loved editing. I, I found it really satisfying. <laughs> it was the only thing I could do that I could sit like eight hours straight and not have to think about it. It wasn't work to me and it still isn't. I just, I really, really enjoyed the creative process of just trying new stuff. And in every video, you can see kind of the evolution of where I am now. It's, I, I look at my channel as like a documentation of my skills, a timeline of how they improve. And you can see in every video, I'm usually trying some kind of new trick. Even recently in the grill type videos, every time it's a new 3D intro, I'm trying new music, new beats. Like there's always something different. I just, I really enjoyed that process. Do you have like a favorite part about the process? Uh, it's gotta be music, lining up music with things. And what's your least favorite? Least favorite is thinking for Footage. I do not like thinking footage. <laughs> While you were still posting vlogs, you kind of went into this podcasting kind of phase. Do you have a reason behind that? The podcasting was... I, I guess I always needed to do something creative, and if it wasn't vlogging, it was something else. And I got into podcasting because, I, I don't know, I just got a, had, had a place to kind of talk, and I thought it'd be cool if I could interview people. I also, I really like designing the uh, artwork for it, and customizing the channels, and uh, and um, setting up the equipment as well was really fun. I bought a mixer, and I had my laptop set up, and we would go to different locations to film with just friends of mine. But it was really, really good practice, because I, I got a really good understanding of how audio equipment works. And um, yeah, you know, it kind of fizzled off. I did a, my last episode was I think a project for uh, ecology and I didn't get okay. a very good grade. Yeah, it's okay. I don't think about it too much anymore. Yeah. How did you come up with the name Goat Milk? It's a very interesting name for a podcast. It was a random word generator. I'm like, what should I call this podcast? <laughs> and then I, I looked up like just a two syllable word because, you know, I have to keep things simple and unique. Definitely. Like, but Goat Milk just sounds so good and it's easy. It's very clean, simple. So and like in terms of color schemes as well, I wanted to keep it really minimal. It's just black and white, just text and lines. And Goat Milk is like the best name ever. So I, I ended up keeping it. I agree. I agree. Do you ever think you'll bring it back? Uh, Definitely at one point, maybe when I'm older and my audience is older and we want a little bit more slow sip your coffee while you watch type content, maybe then. Right now we're we're young and full of energy, so we gotta do some more grill tech, man. Well, let's go, man. How did you find out about virtual reality? So virtual reality was something I've been interested in for a very, very, very long time. Always like the idea of using technology to fuse like reality together. And that this was my access yeah. point. You know, I had heard about it and you try these little simulators of the local mall and they all, they're all crap. And then at one time I, I went to my friend's house and he had a Rift set up. He had a really nice gaming PC and I tried, what's that game called where you kill the robots? I don't, I don't think I played it. Anyways, and it looked amazing. And then I'm like, okay, this that was the first time I remember really seeing like some high-end VR. And I played Space Pirate Invader, whatever that's called. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so I'd always been interested in it. And I was watching YouTubers play it, but it was such an inaccessible thing to me at the time because I didn't have a game PC. And I lived in Vietnam and it's hard to get stuff here. Like they don't just ship like Amazon here. How did that lead on to you, you know, finding about Gorilla Tag? So I remember I'm sitting in math class and I'm browsing Reddit for new quest games to try because my dad was bringing it from Canada because he went and he was going to bring it back 
and I had pre-ordered it from okay. Vietnam, but they couldn't ship here. So I'm looking for games to try, and I'm, I have the original list of games on my phone, like the original ones I wanted to try. And Gorilla Tag was this game on SideQuest. It was like two weeks old. We're going to try it, like whatever. And I remember standing in the living room I'm in right now, and I'm playing it, and my girlfriend's in the other room, and I'm like, like this is the best gaming experience I've ever had. Like, I've never been yeah. so physically and and like mentally immersed in a game because I'm moving and running for my life and it was so engaging. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. And so I just discovered it through a Reddit post pretty much, uh, but I tried it the moment I, I saw it. What was um, Gorilla Tag like back then compared to how it is now? Uh, quiet, <laughs> much yeah. quieter. Cause now she got. Yeah, now it's like filled with a bunch of screaming kids and everything, so. It got, and I don't mind the screaming kids. I mean, that's what, those are the people watching our videos, you know what I mean? The right. textures were way bigger. It was way simpler. There was just the one map. It was forest first, and I don't know if there was anything else when I had played. I don't remember checking out the maps. And caves came out like a week later. I remember caves came yeah. out right after. Lobbies were not as full, and people were not as vocal, and the games were really simple. It was just tag. Uh, people definitely didn't get as creative with game modes, but it was very quiet, very simple, and honestly, really nice. It was a beautiful start to an amazing game. Do you remember seeing anybody that used to play back then that, you know, are still playing to this day? Damn, bro. I kind of outlived everybody. Everyone died. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the VMT, I met him very early on, but I was already making videos. Hi, Blue. How you doing? Hey. You good? He's from the early days. Um, definitely Cracker. There's some OGs that are out there. I, I gotta name Zotolord, Gary, you know, classics. Uh, there's a lot of them. Uh, the Owl, I used to call him. Uh, Doom Guy, he used to play the Doom music in every... Like, there's so many names, bro. How did you end up getting into making your first Gorilla Tag video? So right after I played the game and I spoke to my girlfriend about it, I'm like, I had seen Eric15's video on it. And I remember thinking specifically, watch this guy blow up and watch me miss a chance of not becoming a YouTuber. I remember thinking that if I had watched this go by and watched these other people gain numbers from this game, I was missing out on my chance. That was a thought in my head, but I thought, mm -hmm. okay, look, I'll just make a video. I wasn't thinking that deep about it. I'm like, I'll get a couple views from it. Let's just try. So I set up right here in this living room where I'm at right now. I, I set up my camera and I, I didn't have a microphone to film with. I didn't have a wireless mic or anything. So I found some tape in the drawer and I had a phone and I opened voice notes and I taped it to my chest. It was a simple solution to a simple problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. I put on the tape, I put on my headset and I just played it. And I came up with a couple tips that I thought helped me out, which was moving parallel, you know, using the environment to your surroundings. That video is still up. And so I found these tools to help me. I thought, okay, some people could benefit from this. Because at the time, I was pretty good at the game. I was smoking some fools. <laughs> yeah. You know, I had some knowledge to share. Now, there's people way better than me. But at the time, I was pretty good at the game. And uh, so I had info to share. And I made that first video. And I remember it getting like 4,000 views. And I, I remember walking. And I'm just like, wow. Like, dude, I remember just seeing it. I'm, uh, I was amazed that I'd never seen those numbers on my channel before. Hold on. What the hell? Playing. Do you hear that? Yeah, that happened for me too. How do I turn this? How do we turn this off? The sign over here. Shut up! What kind of inspired you to keep posting? You know the amount of girl tag videos that you have posted now. It was definitely the numbers. I always has. I, I always had ideas of how I'd want to build a community if I ever became a YouTuber. How I'd be super engaged with my fans. I was not gonna be that YouTuber or that guy with numbers who doesn't realize where he comes from. I was never gonna be that guy. As soon as I saw these numbers, I'm like, okay, this is the chance. I see these people watching, I immediately grasp onto, onto them. I think the reason my channel was successful in the first place is because the moment people started watching was the moment I started engaging with them and the community was being built from day one. I think a week later, I launched a Discord. As soon as I saw people commenting, people joined the Discord, we had like two people, three people. I'm like, okay, people are joining this. I was talking with them regularly. I was making friends with them. We were playing together every single video was with viewers so from the moment it started I was building my community and it kept me energized they loved it I loved it it was just a cycle that continued and obviously my channel was growing I didn't make money for like the first eight months of my YouTube career after being monetized because they wouldn't verify me here in Vietnam so only when I moved to Canada did I start getting paid how many subscribers did you had like before you started getting paid uh 40 50k that's wild one thing that you've done during you know kind of the start is you did, you did like a lot of collabs with a lot of youtubers back then you know you had like the mega collab with a bunch of you know the smaller girl tag youtubers who are now you know some of the bigger ones now but i think your first actual you know large collab was with rika yeah how did that one come around because that's like at the time that was you know huge i remember i'm walking out of school at the end of the day and i'm just i'm going home or i'm i don't know i'm going to the gym or something and and 
one of my friends, Zotalord, who was one of the OG guys, texts me. He's like, bro, Rekid just go and join your server. I'm like, who the hell is Rekid? I have no idea who this guy is. And then I go check YouTube, and he's just blowing up, like, with the Josh dub everything. And he's got, like, 375k subs. And I'm like, yo, this is crazy. I've never had engagement from a big YouTuber like this before. So I got super yeah. nervous, obviously. I don't remember how we started talking, but we got in contact, and I'm like, bro, let's make a video together. And he said yes, and it went great. The first video we made together was, like, three minutes long, and I felt like I totally cheated my fans. So I'm pretty sure we made another one after that that was way longer. That was my first big collab, and I was nervous like a mofo. So, yeah, oh, speaking of when you were making videos with Rekid, that's also when you first met Cracker, if I'm correct. I met Cracker, uh, no, I'm, I met him in Monkey's Got Talent, one. Yeah, Rekid was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, that's what I want about. Yeah, yeah. From Cracker appearing in the Monkey's Got Talent, how did he end up, you know, getting in all the videos and then becoming like, you know, the name he is now? He was in the Discord server and he was super funny. Every time I spoke, he replied with something funny. And I was doing these random codes, so he would just make it in. And he just became a character over mm -hmm. time. And yeah, Cracker's the best man. And I got to meet him at VidCon, which was the most fulfilling thing I could have ever asked for was yeah. meeting meeting these friends online. It was absolutely nuts to experience yeah spe actually speaking of vidcon what do you think was your favorite part about it my favorite part about vidcon had to have been it had to have been i went mini golfing which was in the video i went mini golfing with haven cracker elliot and my cousin george who's also been in the videos and just yeah. sitting back and watching cracker Elliot and uh, George hang out because they're the same age and watching them laugh their heads off like they've been friends for a while and they're just playing mini golf. That to me as like an older uh, cousin, I'm close with George, but like just watching them yeah. get along was really, really special. I'm like, look, look how things come full circle, you know, and I'm very lucky to call these, these people my friends. Everybody I've met through Grill Tag and everyone I make videos with are extremely kind hearted people. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, they're, they're really special to me. Yeah, it's crazy the kind of friendships that are formed just from a simple monkey game, you know, transferring that over into real life. It's absolutely crazy. In, I, I, I would say the OG kind of videos, every single video, you drank a bunch of energy drinks. Do you have a favorite flavor or just favorite drink that you had? Yeah, it's uh, Pacific Punch. It's like, it tastes like cherry, kind of. It's very good. Right after that is yeah. Mango Loco. It's funny you asked that. Like, my next, my second, next, second channel video, I ranked all the monster flavors. So you'll see exactly which ones I like. <laughs> did you ever try, oh, did you ever try that ginger brew? Ginger brew. Ginger brew. Monster flavor. Monster? No, I've never tried that. Oh, you need to get your hands on it. They stopped selling at my local store, so I have to order online, but it is the best flavor you'll ever have. If you're ordering Monster online, you have a problem. They don't sell it at the store that I go to. I li Okay, I live in like, I'm kind of like remote. I live in like in a very small little village. And the store, like I go there, there's probably like four cans of Pacific Punch and a few like of the regular ones and that's it. So I have to like order stuff online, man. Yeah, man. The village, the villager monster. <laughs> you can't, can't be drinking no <laughs> villager monster, bro. No, they sell prime. They sell prime too. Are you worse. serious? Not the village prime. <laughs> yeah. Not the village prime fountain. Is there a reason why you stopped drinking energy drinks in your videos? Or just drinks in a whole because it wasn't just energy drink. Yeah, my health was taking a toll. I mean, there were other reasons, obviously. Already yeah. my health wasn't doing good because I still have Crohn's. Like I made a video way, 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 way back when I was young. It doesn't go away. So, but like the energy drinks every day was not good for me also it hurt uh youtube retention so i had to get out okay. so did so did the outros damn this is missing out a lot now you ever think you'll bring some of that stuff back totally most definitely it's That's like i needed to take it out to grow the channel and then it, it'll come back eventually because the community's bigger and stronger now but you have to make some sacrifices yeah. here and there i'm still as much as i'd love to do everything that we love i still gotta play the game of youtube because youtube is now a game blah 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 girl tag fast forward there was this huge dry spell in Gorilla Tag content and updates. People were quitting left, right, and center. Uh, people were complaining about updates not coming out. What were you doing? Because I remember you made a video about how you didn't know if you wanted to continue doing Gorilla Tag at that point. What was kind of going through your mind at that kind of time? That was a interesting period in my life. So on one hand, there was the Gorilla Tag hacker situation where people were, I, I was getting docs. People were joining my codes. They were lagging out my games. I couldn't really record and make videos. Now I know how to deal with this stuff and I know how to make a video out of like the less material I have. I can still make a video out of it. Back then I wasn't as experienced. So I, as soon as something that would happen, I'd be like, how can I make a video now? Besides that, yeah. I, I was stuck in the loop of always trying to one up myself. So I was doing videos like trampoline park, biking outside, running in grill tag, playing in a moving car. Like I didn't really know where to go from there. And I got kind of scared of the, took me aback a little bit because I didn't really know where to go from that point. And I was still, I'm still yeah. very new to YouTube. I've only been doing this for a 
a little over two years now. Uh, I got kind of stuck. And also, not only was I stuck, I was pretty isolated at the time uh, where I was living in, or in Canada just because I hadn't lived there before. I've never lived in Canada before. And so it was my first time being back and actually yeah. staying. And I have zero friend group there. Like, I didn't go to school and I'm not going to school. So I don't really know how to meet people. I'm, just, I'm making videos all day. So I was very isolated. Um, and it was definitely a... I don't want to be a downer, but it was a darker point in my life where I was, mm -hmm. and especially not uploading, I had no purpose. Like there was nothing for me to work it towards. And so it was almost a form of yeah. self-sabotage. But um, yeah, Gorilla Tag was in a weird place. And I still, I have my own opinions about Gorilla Tag. Don't get me wrong. I love the game. I will always push for success. But I have my own opinions that I will keep reserved just to maintain the, you know, the good standing <laughs> I have with everybody. But um, yeah, yeah, it was a really weird time. And I just, I was super, super discouraged, especially when I was throwing away videos because I couldn't make them. And I have a policy now, put out the video, regardless of how the recording goes, we do not throw away videos anymore. It is a complete waste of time and energy. I know you mentioned that you kind of wanted to quit Grill Tag. Was that at the same point or was that later on? I just didn't know what I wanted to yeah. do. And I, I had Grill Tag, which was going so amazingly for me, but I just, I kind of got intimidated and I got scared and confused. And I just, I, I started pulling myself back, which was not a good idea. Like, like, obviously now we're fine and everything's great. Like I was definitely pulling myself away from it because I didn't, I didn't really, I didn't know how to continue. And uh, big changes happening in my life, huge changes. So, you know, I just, I needed to deal with myself a little bit. What kind of brought you back? And because obviously you came back and you just sprung out and now, you know, you're 2 million subscribers now. What kind of brought you back? So I had, I had taken that break and then I came back uh, uploading more um, and I, I was sticking like, so I guess I can kind of go into detail like, so what I found has brought growth to my channel is when basically I had, I had been doing the same content in my garage, just getting back into the videos. And then I had moved to my uncle's basement, which is where I started doing the fan mail videos and all the voiceover yeah. stuff where you see me talking to the camera. When I made that pivot, it's like I had found this new style to explore completely. And I was artistically, it was release that creative energy. Like I wanted to try 3D renders. I want to play around with the music. And I was very retention focused. And I think that stretch, like that winter where I locked myself in the basement for the second time, besides mm -hmm. the original grind that got me there is when yeah. I was really paying attention to the growth of the channel and the retention and all the analytics. So it skyrocketed. It went crazy because every video was getting like 70, 73% retention and people were loving it mm -hmm. and the thumbnails were improving and all that. But I burnt out right after like hard. I burnt out way yeah. hard, probably pro a way worse burnout than I had the first time, which is when I almost quit. Burnout is real, people. It happens. Protect yourself. Don't overwork yourself, please. That stretch yeah. grew my channel like nothing else. And and you can see like when I hit the 1 million, it's like that was that video was my like breaking point. Like, yeah, like I was working, working, working. I had the 1 million. I had a little bit of juice left in me and then I just crashed for a bit uh, and then I stopped uploading. Um, it, it was just, I was editing everything myself. I was see, like seeing nobody. It was a very, uh, that's the thing. It's like my, my best moments on YouTube come from my hardest points in life. So this is what I'm working on now. Yeah. And so just yeah. so you guys know, the, the J Mac Curly team has grown to, we're just under 10 people. Um, now I have people editing my videos and I quality can, I quality check everything to make sure that you guys are getting the desired J Mac Curly experience. Make sure you guys are still loving the videos, and you guys are. So I think we're doing a good job. But I'm not editing my videos anymore. Thank God for that. And just for those people out there who think that change is a very difficult thing, about eight, six to eight months before I got editors, I remember talking to my dad saying, "I can't get editors. My style is too complicated." I remember saying, "My videos can't be built for attention. It doesn't have an intro and middle end, and it just it can't work with my channel." change is possible it comes from opening your mind a bit but that can take time so anyways what i was saying is talking myself in the basement editing like that gave me extreme growth when i came back the videos style had changed mm -hmm. drastically but now where i think where we are with the channel is i can upload videos that don't take as much thinking and because the community is so strong people are happy to see me play i'm happy to play and i can also focus on myself so i don't go crazy right now what is life kind of like outside of youtube so life is roblox right now outside of youtube it's um it's still pretty quiet most of my most of my fun like because here in vietnam all of my friends that were here have gone to university now so i'm still alone here yeah so uh, i'm in vietnam currently 
Uh, I'm going to Texas for Vid Summit. I'm going back to Canada to see my family, take care of my cat Simon, because we have to find a solution for him when we're not in Canada. I'm gonna see another friend in California. So I love to travel. I've been traveling since I was born. I've been to 10 different schools. I've been all over the world. So it's a part of me that I, I like to move and see new things and experience new things. Right now in Vietnam, it's videos. I'm hitting the gym hard. It's the first time I've been consistent with the gym. So basically my life is gym and YouTube in a nutshell. For like from living in Vietnam and living in Canada, what are like the pros and cons and which do you prefer? Canada is amazing because it has my family. Everything is convenient. There's snow. Life is, is generally good there. However, Vietnam is my home. I grew up here. It's super cheap here. The weather is absolutely beautiful. You can get anything you need to done. It's extremely convenient and it's just... I'm so uh, used to it and like, yeah, I have my neighborhood in Canada, but I realized I was walking the other day, like in my hood, I was just going for a walk and I'm like, wow, this, I forgot that this was my neighborhood. I've been gone for so long. I'm like, this is my place, man. This is where I'm comfortable. This is where I feel like I grew up. I have a deep connection to this place. So Canada is amazing. But after living there for two years, it's just, it's not really, I don't think it's for me. Besides you know, the pros and cons. What have been your favorite part about living in Vietnam versus your favorite part about living in Canada? Favorite part of Vietnam is the weather and the prices. It's cheap and it's hot <laughs> and I love it. Yeah, so uh, back into the whole YouTube stuff. What do you think now is the hardest part about making the videos you do? Consistency. Um, I'm still, I'm getting my, it's gonna sound kind of silly, but YouTube is the only job I've ever had. I've never worked anywhere else. I'm still like learning how to work and be productive and consistent and do things on time. Like I'm very new to this whole thing and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty young. So there's a lot I don't know mm -hmm. about uh, life, but I'm learning and it's just consistency getting recordings out on time. But YouTube now is for me is much easier than it was because I'm doing less. I've learned how to delegate to have other people do things for me. Yeah. And most of the time people that do things for me do a better job at it, like thumbnails, edit like there are way more skilled people out there just let me be funny on camera which is what i'm really good at they can take care of the rest you know what i mean yeah obviously you've got the large youtubers like you know you k9 vmt upon like the kind of smaller gorilla tag youtubers do you have any particular people that you have noticed that have you know great potential well i saw your videos i thought the interviews were such a cool idea that no one did yet so that's why we've been talking that's why I definitely want to do one yeah. of them. There's definitely, uh, I can't really name names right now because honestly, I don't remember all of them. But I am, I like, besides making Gorilla Tag videos, I watch a lot of Gorilla Tag creators. Like, I'm always watching mm -hmm. small, small channels. There's no way you can tell if you're a small channel, but I swear I've probably seen your video and I'm always in the community. So there, there's a lot of, like, I think. Uh, there's, there's a lot of really good ideas being done. I think Rax, he's pretty big now, but his video ideas are great. CJVR, I think his yeah. video ideas are really good. He's done stuff that I haven't seen anyone else do. Like just some of these creators, I look at their videos, and I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm jealous that I didn't think of that first. But um, yeah, I'm very excited for the future of Grill Tiger Race. I've never seen a game spawn so many creators. Last time I saw this happen was like with Fortnite like with so many creators. Yeah. Because it's very easy to do. It's easy to get into Gorilla Tag creation and you see everybody doing it so it just causes more people to do it. That's why I'm always encouraging people to start making videos and stuff because it, it, it outlasts the game as well. Like when you have all these creators making money and you know passionate about this thing, it, it's way more than the game now which is why I think Gorilla Tag is such a strong, strong game. Do you have any advice for like the smaller creators out there? Yeah, upload a lot. Upload like there's no tomorrow. Upload until your fingers fall off. That's how you break into <laughs> the Gorilla Tag world from what I've seen. Good <laughs> ideas and uploading frequently. Just think, how can I be different? What can I do that other people aren't? Is there one mistake that you see a lot of the smaller YouTubers make that they should try and improve on? Like what's like the most common thing you see? Asking for subscribers in the first 30 seconds of the video. Do it later. Do, hey man, I've been very guilty as well. <laughs> Do it a little bit later. Wait till you deliver what the thumbnail and title promised. Then it's like a reward for you because you gave them that satisfaction. Here's the video. Here's what we did amazingly. Please consider subscribing if you enjoyed it. Not right at the beginning before they see anything. You know what I mean? Because then it's like it's not a fair transaction. Uh, also, yeah. Um, uh, I can't think of anything specifically in terms of editing and whatnot. But uh, yeah, that's kind of it right now what do you think made your channel stand out upon like the other girl type channels that were right there well i was one of the very first few but i mean it's continued to grow even as other grill type creators were up and coming um i think mm -hmm. one i think my personality has done a lot of the work for me i think people enjoy seeing me play games and be silly on this game i think my ideas are pretty good 
I'm very good at uh, bringing groups of people together. The assembly, teaching VR tech YouTubers. Um, I'm, I'm very good at uh, utilizing my audience mm -hmm. and growing a community. I think that's one of my strongest skill sets is community. And also including things like having an IRL camera uh, in the video, like a full body camera at all times. I think it adds way more to the video and just doing my best to be different. Hence why why I make songs. <laughs> let's get, let's yeah. get into that. Okay. How did you end up making, you know, your first song, Shiny Rocks? I've always wanted to make music, man. Like, like making music is probably one of my favorite things. It's right now, Outside of YouTube, it's the one thing I'm obsessing over. I'm usually working on music, yeah. listening to beats, trying things out like all the time. Um, but yeah, so I had made Shiny Rocks first because like I was just messing around on BandLab. And you know, I'm on a call with Elliot and we're just trying to figure something out. And we came up with this cool flow and it sounded cool. And I, I made that song in like five hours. I recorded the music video the next day. The whole song was made under a day. And it went crazy. I've never seen anything like that. I think it's, at least no one in Grill Tech has done something like that. And, or at least no yeah. one was expecting me to do something like that. And I'm like, wow, this is awesome. It's super fulfilling. I'm enjoying this a lot. So then seven, eight months later, I get back to the drawing board because I didn't know how to top Shiny Rocks, but I got to it and then Yellow Tape was born. Same idea with that. I kind of did that in a day. And then I recorded the music video in like mm -hmm. three, four hours and I edited it the same day. You guys are totally loving the songs and the support is unbelievable. I was not expecting this. All I can say is expect more. We got bangers on the way. I will not let you down. Do you think you're going to try and get some other Grill Tag YouTubers to also feature on your songs? Because I feel like that might have a fun aspect to it. Neither confirm nor deny those statements. I Ooh. Interesting. Okay, so Gorilla Tag, it's grown a bunch. On the off chance that, you know, some things change and you want to take your YouTube in a different career and you actually follow through with it, what do you think you would end up doing? I have many ideas. Right now, I'm in Gorilla Tag because this is where we started, it's where our community is, it's very strong. I have no reason to move from Gorilla Tag. And I play other games once in a while and, and you guys enjoy that too. Um, but I have a lot of ideas for what to do outside of Grill Tag. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not one to say these things out loud because I like to surprise people. So, you know, but I have yeah. definitely other ideas and I think I think it's going to go swimmingly. Our community is way too strong, man. I mean, come on, Curly Gang on top. What can I say? I'm flexing right now, but you can't tell. For real. <laughs> This is kind of on the same topic, but if Gorilla Tag was never a thing, what do you think you would be doing now? I don't like to think about that. <laughs> I don't know what I'd be doing now. <laughs> what I'd be doing now is I'd be in some shitty university that I don't care about, listening to some stupid professor talking to me about things I still don't care about, and I'd be working some job I don't care about. Um, no, I mean, and honestly, I, I would have made the best of my situation at school, and I definitely don't want to discourage anyone from pursuing education. That is not the message I'm trying to put out. This is just personally for me. Um, and I would have yeah. started something. I would have created either a business or some kind of thing that I was running, but I'm very happy I found YouTube and I'm very lucky that it's my job. In your videos, you've been known to play a lot of Gorilla Tag kind of knockoffs. Do you have one that is your favorite? Um, right now I'm on the quest of finding the absolute best one. It's this kind of new thing I'm doing on my channel. I, I want to find the absolute yeah. best fan game out there. But right now, I've had a lot of fun playing Big Scary. I thought Big Scary was really well made. I thought it was super cool. I enjoyed it a lot. One big thing in your channel is the monkey, monkey, monkey thing. How did that, you know, happen? It's, I called it the warm up first. And it was like maybe my second, third video where like, I would get like enraged. And I got this monkey gorilla power and I just like exploded out of me. Pause. But like, um, whoa. <laughs> and like, it was just this fun thing that I did. But then I started doing it every video, kind of like how I wore the tape every video. It just, these things kind of grow on themselves, you know? So, um, yeah, we did that. I, I just kept doing it, and then it turned into this monkey, monkey, monkey thing, and it's just, it, it's gone crazy, and, you know, now it's a thing. Another thing also with, you know, kind of in the older days, is you had one route that you would do almost every single video. Do you still remember that, and would you be able to show us? I would love to show you. I'm playing PCBR, so I might be trash, but start to the ramp here. You go up with one hand because your your body hangs off, so you get to reload your hand faster. You land here and do the same thing up here. Now, when you get to this part here, I duck. I bring my head down because your head is has collision. Like, look, you here's a really great way to save yourself when you're falling. Let's say you're falling off a branch or something. You can just catch yourself with your head. He's dead. Then you run over here. One thing you can do is when you get to this angle of the ramp here, you can bounce back and juke whoever's. Oh my God, whoever's in front of you. <laughs> 
Stop falling, man. But yeah, anyway, so I continue running here. And then the hardest part about this is you go over here and you jump onto this branch and then into tree stump. Now, they can't see you. Oh! As soon as you land over here, you have this shield here. They don't know where you are. So they think you're still... Bruh! They think you're still in the treehouse. So as soon as they start coming around and follow, you just jump right out here. And you jump back onto the same branch and you go right back and continue playing. So it's a cool little trick and it's served me greatly over throughout the years. Ultimate favorite is is got to be... The yeah, the slide juke. The slide juke goes hard, man. And then there's some other ones. I like remember trying to learn that. that. All right. So, do you have a favorite Gorilla Tag cosmetic? That one. Party hat. Gordon. And this badge, yeah. just because no one likes it, so I thought I, I had to call. I had to represent it. I had to become of the fit because everyone <laughs> hates this badge because it looks ugly, but I think it's perfect. And now it's iconic with you. So. Why I like it so much is because it's like I'm blue, and this is almost like the yellow tape I never had. Yeah, do you think Grill Tag will ever add like a yellow tape cosmetic for you? <sighs> I cry myself to sleep thinking about that. <laughs> I don't know, man. Lemming, do it! Do the thing! If I'm like close with the developers or Lemming or anything, like, I don't talk to them. They, I, I, ha I, I don't know if they even like me, bro. But no. I, and I hope <laughs> that comes one day. I think a creator coach should definitely be the next thing because it would bring so many creators, bro. If they launch creator code, and it would benefit so many people, including Gorilla Tag. I don't know why that hasn't been the thing yet, but anyways. So, do you have a favorite moment throughout your entire, you know, YouTube career? Hitting 100k was really special. First time getting recognized was really special. Hitting a million. VidCons are always awesome. Meeting VMT, meeting Elliot, meeting Cracker, meeting Eric. Uh, all the stupid video ideas I've done. The opportunities has granted me. At, the whole thing has been a favorite moment. I mean, hey, you've made it super far you know you're the biggest girl tag youtuber which is insane two million subscribers from just you know simple monkey game is crazy to think about yeah man it's pretty it's pretty nuts we're kind of near the end of the interview is there anything you want to talk about before we end off or anything i want to talk about um i'll end it with a message to the, s the small creators out there who are trying to make it happen best of luck to you guys uh i want you to know that you have my full support remember that gorilla tag is a huge huge community besides the people who watch my video it's all of us so remember that every time you make a video every time you post something you're either nurturing that community or hurting it so i'd say if you're looking to make content it's easy to get views off of negative stuff and bad things i would say avoid that completely and try to make your own name with unique ideas and and unique perspectives such like how pine is doing like showing this new side of girl tag completely through interviews it, it doesn't take too much to think of a brand new idea as long as you set some time aside for it just keep grinding keep posting you have my support and i believe in all you guys and i'm so happy and lucky to be part of my this community and i thank you guys for everything you've granted me in my life i owe it all to you guys you're the best before the video ends i just want to say a big thanks to jim and curly for doing this a big thanks to you guys for getting me to 50,000 subscribers however we're not stopping there we're going for 100k i'm gonna take a little break i'll be back around september the 2nd so stay tuned for that and remember subscribe and use code pine at checkout one giant link in the description